I've never seen this before. <laughs> So I had no choice but to go to the police. They wanted to arrest him. I completely blew the budget. I'm still in complete disbelief at how this has turned out. We're in the north of Johannesburg, South Africa, where there's plenty of opportunities to turn around old houses, like this one that I've just flipped. Very exciting stuff. So let's go back to the start and show you the whole process, from purchase to sale, and reveal how much profit I've made on my biggest and most successful house flipping project to date. I'm Steve, and this is Flipping Johannesburg. <music> Hey guys, this is Project H. We finally got the keys. So, so excited to show you. Let's have a look, but um, prepare yourself. It's bad. It's an old house with quite an officey look from the front and that salmon pink paint is just terrible. A big makeover is needed. So this is a 1,418 square meter stand, four bedrooms, two bathrooms, a cottage, a pool and large garden, and many staff rooms. If you click on the pop-up on screen now or the link in the description below, you can see how much I bought the house for in my negotiation video. So this is it. Quite a closed off space. This wall is the problem because it serves no purpose and it blocks off the room. So taking out this wall and this, yeah, this has to go. This is drywall. All of this is gone. This wall, as well as a piece of this wall, I think then you're left with a big open plan living space. A huge one, actually. How's this light fitting, eh? It's a beaut, eh, Henry? Meant to resemble a bird or something. <laughs> So this covered patio faces the driveway, as you can see, it's not ideal. It would be awesome to get the covered patio facing the pool this way. Knocking through here, yeah, that would be very lacquer. Put a sliding door here. Get rid of the cupboard, definitely. There was obviously a tenant living in here in the lounge. There's a tenant in every room, as you know. There were a few tenants in this room. There was a tenant in this room. There was a different tenant in this room and in this room. And there were tenants in each one of these rooms. When I first viewed the house, the previous owner had rented out every single room to different tenants. This caused a lot of the issues, the mess and mismanagement. It was a bit of a slumlord situation. Let's have a look at the kitchen. Hey, the island's not here. There was, a, there was an island when I bought the house. Oh, it's missing. No oh, man, that doesn't seem right. Just in the middle here. Yeah. At the same granite top as the rest of the kitchen. So I've had a look around, made some phone calls and there's quite a few things missing. The kitchen island, a gate motor, bathroom fixtures, toilets, taps, as well as a geezer. So these fixtures and fittings were here when I bought the house, but now they are gone. And it turns out it was the seller that took them. So a tip before the sale goes through, make sure you do an inspection of the house because you never know what people you're dealing with. What a mess. Don't know how people live like this. This bathroom has an old-fashioned separate toilet design. We need to break down this middle wall so that it becomes one room. And obviously everything else needs to be stripped entirely. The main bathroom needs a complete redesign, especially the bath layout. This is the main bedroom. Nice size. There's quite a serious crack there and some damage. Nothing that can't be sorted out. So this covered patio is in the wrong place and we need to redirect it to the entertainment side, which is here. Yeah. So this would be the ideal place to have a covered patio with some sliders going out to the pool. So 
I'm still thinking of ideas and the best way to do it. There's an actual rainforest flourishing in the pool. I've never seen this before. <laughs> eh. So these rooms are where the double garage needs to be. And there's a few options. The garage could be in the middle with the storeroom either side, or it could be on the left with the bigger storeroom on the right. There's many options to play with, um, but that's for the planning because there's a few walls that need to be bashed down and quite a few structural changes. Gonna be fun. So the boundary wall is quite low. I want to create a little bit more privacy and because it's also a corner stand, um, I've got some cool ideas on how to increase the height of the wall and maybe turn it into a feature. We'll see. Very exciting how this has turned out. The guys have chopped down some walls. You can see where the wall was, this gap in the tiles, and it's opened up this space amazingly. It's exactly what I had in mind. Now we've got this beautiful living space that can be worked with. So when knocking down the walls to create this open plan space, it created a flooring problem in that it left a gap in the floor tiles where the wall used to be. Now I didn't budget to put new tiles because my plan was to use the old bathroom tiles to patch up the gap. But when we knocked out the bathroom tiles, they broke. So that option was out of the question. And you can't source this old tile simply because they don't make it anymore. And that's the problem with old houses. So the only option left was to lay new tiles. Now this is an example of one of the challenges I experienced, where I had to make a quick decision, which meant incurring costs that were not budgeted for. And the toughest part is to try and only spend money on areas where I'm going to get that back in the sale. So after some thought, I realized this is not an area to try and save. This is the main living space. It's as you enter the house, first impression, it needs to be perfect. So of course, I spent the extra money and we laid new floor tiles. So this is where the, the big crack was. And the guys have opened it up. They've put some meshing in, put some lintels in close it up. We've shifted doors around just to make it more ensuite. We've bashed some walls um, to open up the space. So now it leads nicely to the, to the bathroom. Pretty amazing what we found. We, we discovered some Rhodesian hardwood when uh, the guys were clearing uh, the rubble. And um, check it out. There's so much of it and definitely going to use it, whether it's on this house or another project. Very cool stuff. So this wall was leaning quite bad, caused by the neighbor's tree. So we've removed the tree and we're waiting for the soil to dry a bit from the rains. And then we're going to put back the uh, precast wall and uh, sort it out. So the guys have been busy with the garden cleanup. It was such a mess. And one of the things we came up with was, there was a palm tree here and they actually moved it from the middle of the garden to the wall at the back, which makes so much more sense. And we saved a tree in the, in the process. So the guys started plastering here the other day and the rain came and rained everything off. So they've carried on now and moving along quickly and there's clear sky so I think we sorted it. So the entertainment area is so important to get right and we spent some time just working on the space. We've leveled it off, it's ready for paving, we've added a sliding door and the next step is building the patio roof. But at least now this flows nicely onto the pool area and the paving is gonna run all around the pool. So we've done a sample of the interior color that I've chosen. This is it here. Very subtle light gray, looking nice. 
So this is the existing cornice in the house and you can see it's a specific pattern polyurethane. Now where we put new ceilings we had to try and either source this or match it up and um, quite a challenge but what I've managed to do is if you look here found a company that took this pattern and mimicked it, copied it, matched it up um, in polystyrene. And such a win because we don't have to replace all the cornices in the whole house. Um, we just use this and, and patch it up where it joins to the existing. Problem solved. So an update on the items that the seller stole from me. He wasn't willing to reimburse me or to return the items. So I had no choice but to go to the police. They investigated and after he actually admitted to the theft, they wanted to arrest him, but they made it my call on whether they were going to arrest him or not. Jeez, it was a stressful time because I don't know who I'm dealing with. Next thing he comes after me. So in the end, they didn't arrest him because he agreed to return some of the items, two geezers and a granite kitchen island. So I went with my guys to his house and we loaded the stuff in my truck. You can imagine how heavy a granite island is. It was a very weird experience, but it was satisfying getting the stuff back that was stolen from me. But the reality is, at the end of the day, I was still out of pocket by about 30,000 Rand, which was a big blow to the budget. So I learned a lot from this experience, mainly that you should always inspect a house thoroughly before taking transfer. Also, I learned to make a stand when someone's stolen from you, being able to deal with conflict and confrontation. And as horrible as the experience was, I'll really look back on it now as a learning experience. Check how cool this paint color's turned out. We've got the, it's darker than charcoal, it's called barely black on the pre cast and above it we've done a clear coat on the timber. It's looking so, so nice. So this is the fun part, choosing the paint colors and you can see the improvement on this terrible salmon pink, whatever it is. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna do this off-white, it's called antique bone, for the exterior walls and contrasting with this barely black on the window sills and frames, garage door and the roof. Going for that very contrasty, almost white black look. It's going to be lovely. So the garage is done, door is installed. Let's have a look. Such a nice big double garage and on the right we've created a storeroom there with an opening. Workshop or storeroom and on the left there's a full-fledged room with a bathroom. So this is, this is brilliant. It's a real seller this. I've become so used to plumbing pipes getting damaged during projects. Three pipes were hit and had to be repaired on Project H. We had another plumbing issue that I've never seen before. My plumber noticed a section of paving outside the staff room that was a bit sunken into the ground. After digging, we discovered that the toilet waste pipe was not joined to the main sewerage line. So the poo was literally going into the soil. You can see the water gushing out when flushing the toilet. The smell was intense. Apparently bad plumbers do this on purpose so that you have to call them back every month to fix the blocked line. It's so crazy. I'm just glad I've got a great plumber on my side. Thanks Ryan. Hey guys, so you can see the pool is almost full. Had a sleepless night last night, just double checking it because I was nervous it was going to overflow. We had three hoses running and we loaded down to one hose overnight, but it wasn't enough. We should have kept the three going, but we're almost there, almost full. So the fix-up budget is never going to be 100% accurate, and that's why I build in contingencies. But on this flip, I completely blew the budget and the contingency. I completely underestimated the sheer scale and depth of the project from the beginning. The costs started adding up, and would you believe it, we reached a point where the project came to a halt, and there was a risk 
that it would not be completed. And this was because the additional fix-up costs, not budgeted for, totaled an eye-watering 300,000 Rand. So you can imagine, I was scrambling, stressing, trying to source the money to fund this additional spend, which I eventually did, but all the while being unsure whether I would recoup this in the selling price. But my gut feel was that it was absolutely necessary. I had no choice but to bite the bullet, carry on, operating on a wing and a prayer. It was pretty stressful and I just took on more risk. And what made it worse was that I actually beat the budget on my last project, which is unheard of. This renovation was the toughest I've ever done, dealing with theft, major problem solving and blowing the budget. But it was months of having a whole lot of fun creating a brand new home. And seeing the completion of my own creation is a huge sense of accomplishment. Here it is, Project H finally completed. And here it is, the vision brought to life. Wow, it looks like a completely different house, eh, Henry? Yeah, I can't believe it. Wow, the, the furniture staging is absolutely phenomenal. And even though it's a big open plan space, you can see we've staged it into three separate living areas. And I think this, in itself, is the most dramatic transformation of the whole house flip. Just completely transforms the space. So we really modernized the kitchen on a budget. We got the island back from the cellar and um, there was nothing wrong with the existing doors. So we painted them and added new handles and then obviously new appliances and a new backsplash tile. So it just looks fresh and new. And um, yeah, unfortunately the teacup stayed. I know that wasn't your favorite, eh, Henry? Come have a look at the master bedroom space. It was so disjointed before. Now there's no jutting out walls. The flow is right. And uh, look at this, you wake up with a view of your own private tea garden. So the existing cover patio was horrible. And if you look at the columns, we neatened them up by squaring them off and we cladded the bases in timber to run that timber theme through. I really enjoy the creative side and coming up with design ideas on my projects. And from early on, I had the idea to use timber as a design feature. So I worked closely with Paul from Fine Tune Interiors, who is absolutely brilliant at his craft. And together we came up with unique ways of bringing this to life. The timber wall extension, the cladding, and a few other decorative elements in the house. 
And I believe this really gives the house that X factor, that differentiator. And if we turn to this side, of course we knocked through here and put a slider to the pool. And that's the main entertainment area now. I'm still in complete disbelief at how this has turned out and how we've transformed it from what it was. It's completely new, newly paved, painted, clean lines. And you can see on these steel uprights, we cladded them in timber to carry on the timber theme. And I think it just makes all the difference. This is the focus area and I know how much buyers will love this part of the house. So the changes we made to the boundary wall really speak for themselves. The timber gives you that extra bit of privacy with the height increase and it contrasts so nicely with the charcoal colour. I'm very, very happy with how it's turned out. So because we renovated the existing pool, we were governed by the pool's level when we laid the paving, which as you can see, posed a slight challenge with drainage and runoff because the outside level is higher than the level inside the house. So to direct the runoff away from the house, we added this grate and drain, which solved the problem. So the swamp has gone and the new pool is looking sparkling. I mean, we cemented up, we filled cracks, we resurfaced, we ran new piping, new pump, new filter, new sand, new light, everything is new. There was no way I was going to rely on any of the old stuff. So while the guys were replastering this cottage, it rained all the plaster off and we had to incur costs on getting more materials and this is part of the reason why we blew the budget, but at least it's complete now and it looks beautiful. I designed the cottage layout in such a way that it could also be used as an office space or as a separate rental, leaving options open for the new owners. The two rooms weren't linked, they had their own bathrooms, so I linked both rooms with a single sharing bathroom and a passage that closes a bathroom off from both rooms. You can see the garage door is also charcoal. We painted it. Now, when we bashed down the walls here, obviously the tiles got damaged and we needed to retile, but that wasn't in the budget. So after searching around, I managed to find a ceramic tile for 39 Rand a square meter. The last of the range, A grade ceramic, and this was from a retailer, not a supplier. So all you DIY enthusiasts will know how reasonable that is. So we made it work. So as you know, I blew the budget on this renovation and spent a lot more than planned. So when it came to the listing price, I needed to list higher, but making sure to not list too high. We listed the house at 3.35 million and we had a lot of interest. Multiple offers came in and a week and a half later, we sold for 3.3 million. Absolutely incredible. A special mention to the Arthur Baron Estates team, the passionate about property team, 
Arthur and Marina. It's thanks to your guys' hard work and marketing that I got my price and it sold so quickly. So thanks guys, really made the difference. But congratulations, Stephen. I mean, I think you made our life very easy because properties like this sell very quick, especially when they've had this extreme makeover. So well done. Thank you. There's nothing more satisfying than transforming something and making it beautiful again. It's really rewarding. And I, I genuinely believe that no matter the state of a house, it can be fixed up and transformed. And you just need the vision to see that end goal. And then I guess, I mean, I get to create a brand new house for the new owners, which is absolutely amazing. And then the numbers side I love, um, the business side of flipping, that really gets me going. I purchased the house for 1.3 million Rand. The renovation costs came to a whopping 858,000, which made the total costs 2.158 million. In a week and a half, we sold the property for 3.3 million. Sales costs came to 172,000, which brought the total profit to 970,000 Rand, just short of a million Rand. I'm still so speechless at how this all turned out and how beautiful this house looks. It makes every single thing I went through worth it. And it proves time and time again that you cannot beat the winning formula of a brand new house done properly, flipping Johannesburg style. Thanks so much for watching and for the support. I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel, Flipping Johannesburg, and share this video. As you know, there's a lot that goes into making these videos and I really wanna continue doing so for you guys. You can follow me on my social media accounts for more regular updates. See you guys in the next one.